So today we're going to talk about structures of expressions. Expressions are almost like equations but without the equal sign in it. The first thing we're going to do today though is go through some definitions that you need to write down. The first few should be a review for you but we're going to go through them anyway in case you missed them in the past and then we'll get on to some new definitions. Our first term to know is the word term. A term is a section of an expression. A term can be made up of a number, a variable, or it can be the product of a number and a variable. It could even have more than one variable in it, but today we're talking about uh, terms with only one variable. So I've listed the expression 8x to the fifth plus 7x to the third minus x squared minus 4. If you look closely, the addition and subtraction signs split this expression up into four distinct parts. And those four parts are terms. So our first term is 8x to the fifth. Our second section or term is the 7x to the third. This next one is going to be a little bit tricky because of the subtraction sign in front of it. My rule is the sign in front of a term always stays with that term. So this x squared isn't just an x squared, it's a negative x squared. And then our last but not least term, negative 4. Notice that in the actual expression there are no commas because that's just our polynomial. And when I list the terms, I use commas to separate them. There is a difference between writing the expression, writing the expression, sorry, and listing the terms. Make sure you know the difference between the two. Next, the definition of coefficient. Coefficient is just the numeric portion of a term. I like to call it the number in front of a variable. In this expression before, there were four terms, but there weren't four coefficients. Eight is a coefficient because it's in front of a variable. So is seven. In front of the x squared is a negative. That stands for negative one. So negative one is a coefficient. But negative four is not. Negative four is a constant, not a coefficient because it's not attached to a variable. Be really careful with that one. You're very familiar with exponents or powers. Our powers are 5, 3, and 2. Those are our three exponents. And the only variable in our expression was x. So x is our only variable. Now on to new definitions. Our first new definition of the year is the degree of a polynomial. The degree is determined by the greatest exponent in the polynomial itself. That's only a polynomial with one variable. If there's more than one variable, it's different. So keep that in mind. We're only talking about polynomials with one variable. So here's my example. Notice we're looking for the greatest exponent. My greatest exponent is 4. So that exponent is going to tell you the degree. This is a fourth degree polynomial. If that term wasn't there and my biggest exponent was 3, it would be a third degree polynomial and so forth. Descending order is when I rewrite a polynomial and change the order so that my exponents are listed from largest to smallest. So here I have yet another polynomial. If I was asked to write it in descending order, I would want to take the term with the biggest exponent and put it first, then the next largest exponent, then the two, then the negative 3x has an exponent of 1, then the constant or term with no variable. Technically that has an exponent of 0. 
There is something missing in here though. Do you see how this 6x squared is a positive 6x squared? But, you know, I can't really put two terms next to each other. So I need to be sure to put a plus in front of that 6x squared. So I have five distinct terms. Now I've written the polynomial in descending order and that's how all of your answers are going to look this year. Last definition is leading coefficient. That's the coefficient of the term with the largest power. So the term that's determining your degree the coefficient or the number in front of that term, right, the number in front of the variable, is going to be called your leading coefficient. So in my first example it was 2. In my second example the leading coefficient would be that negative 9. And in my new example my second degree polynomial has a leading coefficient of 4. So let's go through a couple of examples to see what you're going to be looking for on your assignment today. So this asks us to identify the terms of the following expression. In other words, list the terms. Identify the coefficient, variable, and power of each term. Then find the leading coefficient and the degree of the expression. So let's tackle this one at a time. First of all, it asked us to identify the terms. Okay, let's do that first. If I needed to identify the terms, um, it's really helpful to have them in descending order before we do any of this. That way everybody's answer is going to kind of be the same and it's going to be way easier. So first, I'm going to pull these um, into descending order. So I'm going to bring biggest exponent, next largest exponent. And I'm going to keep going in order until I have descending order. This step, when you're just listing terms, isn't always necessary, but it makes it way easier to grade. So then to list my terms, I'm going to split these up and simply put a comma between each one. Okay, normally I would have commas here. There's a reason why I didn't this time. Trust me. Because the next thing it asked me to do was identify the coefficient variable and power of each term. I still have my five terms split up, but now underneath each one I'm going to write its coefficient, variable, and power. I still probably should have put commas here, huh? So the first term I'm going to look at is that negative 7x to the fifth. Coefficient or number in front of the variable is negative 7. Variable is x and the power is 5. Pretty simple. Let's move on to the 3x to the fourth. Coefficient is 3, variable x and power is 4. I'm going to keep doing that with each term. When you're asked to list these for every term, a grid is a great way to do that. When I get to the negative 6x, I want you to keep in mind that even though it's really easy to find the coefficient of negative 6 and the variable of x, remember when you're missing a coefficient or an exponent, it's always going to be 1. On the last one, because there's no variable when I'm looking at that positive 2, that means there's no coefficient. There's also no variable. And we say that that has a power of 0 because there's no x's involved. And finally, it asks us to find the leading coefficient and the degree. If I'm in descending order, it's really easy to find the leading coefficient, which is negative 7. And the degree comes from the largest exponent, remember, so this is a fifth degree polynomial. One more super quick example. 
Sometimes it will, a problem will simply give you the terms and ask you to write a polynomial function in descending order that contains those terms. This one also asks us to determine the degree and leading coefficient of the polynomial. So first things first, remember take this in baby steps, follow the instructions one at a time. Write the polynomial in, de in descending order. Super simple, take the term with the biggest exponent and the next and the next and the next and where you don't have a minus, we want to put a plus, right? So we're first of all going to leave those in descending order. I'm going to rewrite those again. Let me get my pen. Writing these in descending order, I want my biggest exponent first. This makes my writing not look so good. Sorry about that. And then I have a 4x cubed. I had a positive x squared. And finally, that negative x. I have written them from largest exponent to smallest. Remember the exponent over here is 1. So now I'm in descending order. Next. I'm going to, it asked us to find the degree of the polynomial. Since our biggest exponent is 5, this is going to be a fifth degree polynomial. So I'm going to write fifth degree. And last but not least, it asked us to find the leading coefficient. If I have my polynomial written in descending order, the very first number you see should be your leading coefficient. And we're done. Make sure that you write down any questions that you have so you can remember to ask them in class. Your assignment comes from your Unit 2A workbook. We're doing pages 13 and 14, all 10 problems. And remember to write all of your answers in descending order. That's it. Have a great day and I'll see you in class.